Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're continuing the PCB design in reverse course, and we're going to be looking at this board again. So remember, this is the board that we've been uh, looking at here. So far, we've looked at the, we've imported the project, we've opened up a uh, the project files and looked at the Gerber files. Today we're going to take a step back into Project Folder Two and actually hook together all of the uh, traces that are not there anymore. So let's take a look at that here. So first things first, let's go and open up this folder. If you don't know, we'll have a link down below for how to find this uh, how to find this set of folders here. This is the NAC KiCad workshop files. That's what it's all under. We already looked at number one. Now we're going to go to number two. Okay. And again, this is just another KiCad uh, project with uh, the the traces disconnected here. We're going to go into the PCB layout editor because we are doing layout here. And, oh, and do, 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 here it is. All right, here we go. So uh, what do we have here? So we have uh, all of the front layers are turned on. We do not have the back footprints turned on, so we'll do that. And now what we have is we have these little white lines here that are called rat's nests. So what we want to do, all the parts are in place. Uh, what we're going to do is there's two, there's two things you can do here. One, uh, one is you can do the, uh, the easy mode, but not even easy mode. This is just what we're going to do here today, which is just con connect together the uh, rat's nests as we have here. And uh, rat's nests are these little white lines. The other one you can do is actually, if you if you want a little bit of an extra challenge and you want to try and match the uh, match this here, what we can do is actually uh, grab all these footprints. So we can select, click and, and drag to select. We can right click. We say select filter selection, and then we just say footprints. Okay. We're going to hit M to move. <laughs> move them out here. Right click. We're going to say align distribute. Uh, align the middle. And then we say align to uh, center. There we go. So now everything is all in the same spot here. Oh, we have an extra trace left over here. I did not notice that one. Um, <clears throat> so now you're starting eff effectively from scratch. So if you want to go and do all the placements yourself, you can do that, right? So we can um, basically have, you know, you can do whatever kind of layout you want to, and you can figure out the best organization of these small set of components here. And so this is very similar to the getting the blinky tutorial, but you're already doing layout here. I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times here and undo what I did, and we're just going to get, go together and 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 uh, look at what this looks like here. Okay, I'm going to turn off the front layer here and uh, the front solder mask, and I'm also going to do another thing here that we have a video about, which is to flip the board view. I find this to be a little bit simpler sometimes, especially when we've got you know. So this is what it's actually going to look like if you were uh, you know if you were holding this PCB in your hand. This is the view you're going to be having here, right? So this is the view that we're now looking at because we've actually flipped that view. Otherwise, you'd be kind of doing everything, everything in reverse. All right, so uh, we're going to go and start uh, trying to route this thing. So first things first, let's go and uh, so we're we're going to hit X to start, and then we click a trace. And hmm, so I'm going to be honest. I had forgotten how how we did this, uh, how I did this layout the first time. So this is kind of me figuring this stuff out as well. Now what I do know is that usually I want to have a, a ground plane on the back here. So I want to have a ground plane on the back. I may want a power plane on the front. So let's go and do that first things first. So let's add a filled zone. We're going to click outside the, uh, the, the entire design here just to make sure it covers everything. And then uh, we'll go back side. We're going to put the ground on the back. Uh, and here we go. Now what you may notice there is that this looks a little bit different. That dialog looks a little different than before. That's because I have switched to KiCad 5.1. Uh, it shouldn't change too much if you're in KiCad 5.0. We're we're just using the default stuff right now, so we can, uh, so we should be fine. I'm gonna double click to finish, and now we filled in here. So we see, this is now connected, the uh, ground pads. So these are all connected here, and that looks good. Okay, so let's now go on the front side. We can just uh, we can select the plane. There we go. Click right to left to select the plane. Uh, sorry, we want we don't hit E. We want to right click and say duplicate, and just place it right on top there. Now we want to hit E, and so one of these now switches to the top side copper, and we're going to switch it to VCC. And now if we turn on that top layer, we see that there is a fill. That, oh, sorry, we do not actually want to do that. I'm sorry. We do not want the v, the top filled because that is where all of our art is. So we are, we're going to undo that there. So we just want the copper on the back side. We'll do we'll run the VCC separately. In fact, we can do that first things first. So let's go and run the. So we're going to run this trace 
um, on the back side here. We can make it a little bit thicker. I don't think I've actually got, oh, I do have it set up here. So I have it set up in the project, so we have multiple uh, predefined sizes here, right? So I have 10 mils and 24 mils. So I'm going to click to start. I hit X to, to draw a trace. Click to start. I'm on that 24. And now I'm going to draw the uh, trace to split through here. <clears throat> okay, now we have VCC running through here. Let's make sure that it looks okay. Um, we're going to hit B to redraw the ground plane. And the ground plane does go on either side of the trace, which is important so that we have a way for everything to get back there so that this ground's connected, the other one's connected. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see how that looks. B to redraw. And okay, so we'll leave these other ones for a little bit later. I'm going to switch my, uh, my trace size back down by doing Control W. So now I'm done, back down to 10 mils. I'm going to connect these together. Also, I should be saying here, I guess I didn't say, if you, uh, if you want to go and uh, if you don't want to just follow along, you want to go do it, I do recommend you go and do this yourself, right? So, um, you know, if you're struggling, you can go and try it and then come back and watch how I do it. And that's kind of the, you know, contextual electronics method of, you know, try it, try it yourself, struggle a little bit. The struggle is good. And then if you have trouble, then you can see how I do it. It's not the only way to do it. It's another important thing. You should also see if you, you know, if you move the footprints around, there are multiple ways to, to do this layout. But I'm just kind of showing the way that I have the existing board. And if you bought the kit, then you would also see that. OK, um, so, let's, uh, so we also need to get let's see this one connected here. What I'm trying to think, what I'm trying to think about here is what is going to cut up the ground, the ground plane the least, right? And um, so you want to have a little bit of, you want to have this this uh, flow of the path of the ground plane here to still happen because when we have this connected, we also want this connected up here. We might be able to, you know, if we don't necessarily have anything through the center of this um, of this part, it'll be okay. But we definitely want to have this ground plane connected and this one and then this one. So all of these need to make sure they have a connection point back to the to that um, <clears throat> to over here. So again, the, the current would then flow from here and here back along this side over to here. Okay, so let's um, we're gonna start drawing from pad two here and we're gonna drop a via. We're gonna hit V to drop a via. Click that should take us to the top side and then we can finish that trace. Same thing here we're gonna uh, start from the, the pad one and drop a via. The via can actually go anywhere, but it is also pretty close to this one here, and that's good here. So now that connection's done. Okay, so let's do, it looks like this one's just a short connection here. And this one's a short one here. Okay, let's draw re B to redraw. All right, so how many are left here? So we have four unrouted remaining. Okay, so we can do this. Now, if you if you're having trouble with the uh, if you if your traces are like going wild all over the place, make sure your grid is set properly. So you want to have uh, so my grid set at 0.25 millimeters. Um, that's that's not too bad. We could go smaller. We could you know if you, but if you go larger like this, let's just do that as an example. Then you see how jumpy my my traces are here, and it's trying it's trying to figure out where it can put this on this grid. It's 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 very very jumpy. Um, it sometimes makes that connection, but usually I want to have a grid that's a little bit smaller than this just to to um, make it easier to connect here. So you see how much smoother that is now. All right, so I'm trying to figure out how, let's see, I think, so I think this one's fine. We definitely don't want to cut off um, this connection here. So I think what we want to do is like this. Okay, oops, oops. Don't want to hit via. Uh, that was V, I hit V there by accident instead of B. That kind of flipped the side. So we hit B to redraw. And now let's, I think we want to take this one. So there's no ground connections over here, so I think we're okay to do something like this. I think this might actually be, I'm slightly remembering what's going on here with the, uh, the existing design. I think we did something like this. We hit B to redraw now. See, now you, there is a cutout here. Um, so it doesn't look great, but I think the connections are good. And we do have zero unrouted. So if we want to make the fill a little bit more, we could do something like this. Oops, let's undo that. Control Z. And hit, I'm hitting a mouse in, in in the drawing in the trace drawing mode. You see that that pencil there. I'm mousing over, hitting D, and that allows me to drag this this uh, this trace here. Hit B to redraw. If I try and drag it too far, it's going to start. You see, it starts following over here. So it starts to you know it's trying trying to basically hug this pin seven here. That's why it's going out and around that. Um, 
So we can also do something like this. We can actually redraw here. See how it's basically saying, oh, you want to redraw? That's fine. Let's redraw like that. And now it actually makes that go away. So this just gives it a little bit more of a fill in here. There's really no, there's no electrical reason to do that other than some cosmetic reasons there. So it looks like everything's connected now. Let's hit control save. You always want to save your project there. Uh, okay, now that we're going to go do a design rule check. And so we want to set our, so our minimum track size is 0.2 millimeters. Our minimum via size is 0.4. Um, we're not using micro vias, so we don't have to worry about that. We definitely want to refill all zones before per performing DRC. So that's basically all the, the backside zones. And let's run DRC here. Bottom outline does not form a closed polygon. And that is basically, this is part of the, uh, the outline that I talked about, uh, I believe I talked about, so that's why it's not filling. Um, and that is fine. This may have changed. So this is, I believe, a 5.1 versus 5.0. I did not see this error in the past. But um, like I showed you in the, the files, we should be OK. Let's go and take a look. If we hit Alt-3 here, let's take a look at what it renders. So this is rendering the same kind of thing as before. <clears throat> and it is having trouble with that polygon, but it is. Um, I, think, I think this may have been fixed, though. Looks like, yeah, so there's, it is showing this as a polygon in this layer. But um, we, we will leave this one, and I'll go and investigate this and, and come back to you about that in future videos. Um, this, this is an error that I ignored in the past because um, the program is not capable of, of handling this. This does look like it may have been fixed in KiCad 5.1. So the next step here would be we go and generate uh, Gerber. So we go to the plot menu up here. And then we uh, front copper, back copper, front silk, back silk, front mask, back mask, and edge cuts. We want to put this into a, we'll put this in a new directory. We'll put this in Gerber v2. We're going to say plot the references, not the values, and all this other stuff here. This should look all good. We don't want to tent, we want tent vias. We don't want to not tent vias. Um, and then everything else can be default, I believe. So we generated Gerber's. And now we can generate the drill files. Again, this is the uh, PTH and NPTH. Generate drill files. Close, and then if we want to, we can go and look at these Gerbers. That's what we did last time. Ultimately, this is what you'd be sending off to the fab. So, um, you know, like if you use a, a provider like Oshpark, you would not be sending these off. You'd probably just send off the PCB file itself. But in this case, we do want to uh, send this off. All right. Um, so we're are we in the right one. Yep. So Gerber v2. All right. Let's see if that loads up. So there's the Gerbers like we had last time. We can also load up the drills. And we can kind of go through and just select these different layers. Front side, back side, all these things, silk screen. All right, this looks pretty good. Taking a look at my uh, design here, it does look somewhat similar to the, uh, to the actual finished product that we looked at last time. So that's also good. So you have now officially done a layout. Obviously, you had the parts. You didn't have to, but you, you know, if you did what I just showed, you started from a already placed position, and you ran the traces, and you created a power a power plane, a ground plane in this case, uh, and you generated Gerbers, and that is you know that is a large piece of layout. Obviously, there's a lot of nuance there, but the reason that we're doing this in reverse is because getting to that point is often somewhat confusing. You know, getting to putting in a brand new set of components. Maybe you don't know what components you even need there. Uh, we wanted to get you to the point where you're doing a layout to start with. And that's why we're doing the PCB in reverse in the first place. What we're going to do in the next video is we're actually going to import the components from the schematic. So the schematic is already made. We're going to import the components from the schematic. And we'll actually, um, we'll actually uh, place, place the components then. And we can redo this thing. But we will, we'll only go to the point of layout. And then you could keep taking it further. But you know, another thing we like focusing on here at Contextual Electronics is that repetition. So being able to do something like this over and over again is a good practice for what you, what you want to be uh, <clears throat> learning eventually for doing your own board. Once it, you know, after 10, 20 boards, it becomes second nature. But at the beginning, I do remember how confusing it was. And I wanted to make it a little bit simpler for sitting down and doing a layout, because that is what people often think about. What you'll see as we go backwards in time, as we start doing uh, more and more of the, the actual design piece, we will actually, you know, we'll run into some of the stuff that you might be like, well, how do I know what part to pick? And how do I know, um, you know, what component size should I be using? That kind of thing. 
That's something that we cover a lot in contextual electronics, you know, the actual design of electronics. This is the layout uh, piece and actually getting your idea in your head onto a PCB. But, you know, the actual com the concepts and the, you know, using resistors, using op amps, using 555 five, five timers, all that stuff. That's what we go over in contextualelectronics.com. Uh, so if you like that, you can go over to the site. Uh, check it out. We have a couple other courses there. We go over the theory, pairing, pairing together the theory and the practice, which is kind of our main focus there. So we'll have more videos here on a reverse PCB design in the future. If you have any questions, you can go over to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. Thanks for watching.